Should we bring this? Mm -mm. No? How about this? Maybe we should bring that, huh? How about this? Oh, should we bring pasta maker? No, we don't. Why not? Make pasta. On the hood of our car. I don't know. We're gonna bring this though. Okay? We did it! We did it! <laughs> Hello? Oh, yeah. Mira, do you have your mom's keys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is <Wait>. great! <laughs> <laughs> Radiance Dairy. Um, what's the guy's name? Francis. Francis. Okay. Cool. Yeah, let's go. First time I went to school at Winona State University, and I, I got a, uh, a degree in music and philosophy at that time. And, and then I actually went to graduate school in orchestral trumpet performance for a semester in Texas. <laughs> I still play trumpet, yeah, and, and things I play like for weddings and for various things. I, I realized I wasn't going to be Winton Marsalis, and so <laughs> I had to do something more practical. <laughs> I don't really play for the cows. Actually, I used to have an old trumpet here that was in a house fire. I, used to, I could call them home with it. Like, it was like a bugle. And, and so if the gate was open, if I would blow, the, blow on the bugle, they'd come home. <laughs> Whatever you train them to do, you know, they'll do. The key thing you can see is that we have a lot of small pastures. All of these little green lines are electric fence lines. And so they're about two acres each. And these are the lanes that the cows get out to the pastures in. So, uh, the cows rotate around the pastures and, and then by the time they rotate around the first one is growing up and so um, the, this pastures are all in sequence. You want to jump in? I think we can get three in here. Well, um, this dairy started in 1980 with uh, several families got together and they bought two cows and they had milk for their own use. And as they increased the size and number of animals, um, gradually 
um, they began to sell milk to other people. And, uh, but they, their, their original idea was that they wanted to have a dairy where the cows were taken very well care of. And, and, uh, and they, they had a, um, a part of their plan was that if a cow milked for seven years and then was no longer able to milk, that they would retire the cow. And so when we bought the dairy in 1992, um, they were milking about 20 cows, and, and since then, we've, we have, as we expanded our market, we've added more cows. But uh, um, we, we um, agreed to that same principle. And so there are several people who live in the area who have um, some land in the country, and they would like to have cows for a, a sort of a pet. And so um, they will take a cow that has been milking for a long time and is no longer able to milk. And so you might call it the retired cows. I've not heard of anybody else that does that. <laughs> Normally, um, in a conventional dairy farm, the average cow lasts about two and a half years um, before it goes off to slaughter. So, um, in a normal conventional dairy farm, cows are pushed very hard for high production. Um, they are in, in confinement and they get a lot of corn, which produces a lot of milk. But corn is not uh, um, a food that's natural, a feed that's natural for a cow. A cow is, has a rumen that's made to digest forage, grass. And so when they get a lot of corn in a cow's stomach, the cow's stomach gets acid and it causes a number of uh, metabolic problems. And so cows don't last very long in a con confinement. <laughs> this cow here, she's got this, this, um, this little benign tumor on her face. She's uh, had it since she was a little calf and it's, it's never bothered in the vet say it's just a fatty tissue. And she's, she's friendly. Yeah. And she's, she has come up to me many, many times so far. She's 11 years old, too, so she's been doing pretty well here. How long do they usually live? Um, that's a pretty old cow, 11 years old. That'd be pretty rare in a confinement place. It'd be almost you know, un, unheard of. But um, we have a couple of 11 year olds now, and we've milked them up to like 15 years old in the past. <laughs> like the tongue is incredible. It's like. Rough sandpaper, right? <laughs> yeah. We saw some dead elms on his property, and he said that they have dead elms and that they may have morels. So um, we're not back to chat, we're back to uh, get, ours. get our, get some, <laughs> get some morels. Here he is. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Good. You wake up with a camera in your hand? Yes, always. <laughs> So we didn't, I'm pissed. We didn't get any morels. We got one the other day. We just drove south too fast and it's like 85 degrees in Iowa and everything's already like growing. I'm sure there are already morels. They were up and now they're, now they're gone. So we just drew, drove through morel season. flowers instead <laughs> and we're gonna make something I don't know what these are really good for you and apparently you can pluck them you can take as many violets as you want they, you don't hurt the violet at all by, by eating them. They taste kind of like nothing. Oh, they have a slightly violety flavor. <laughs> if you imagine what violet tasted like, the color, that's kind of like what they taste. All right, so we're, you know, on the show we like to do um, recipes 
of some of the places we've been. And except for we're in the car and we don't have a recipe. I mean, we don't have a kitchen. So here we are in the gas station. Um, should I turn it off? So, um, ah, there we go. But we're leaving Iowa, and we wanted to do an epi this episode entirely in Iowa. So our only choice was to um, cook or create something in the car. We have the air conditioning off, and it's 85 degrees out. We um, are getting hot in here, so we got to make something quick and something refreshing. So, a plug. I have this thing which lets me plug into the car. And I got a blender. <laughs> and so we're gonna make a refreshing yogurt drink with violets and yogurt and honey. And no air conditioning. And no air conditioning. Now we're just gonna put all these violets in here. Well, I was hoping that it would turn purple. It hasn't. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to be tasty. So here we, here we go. Pretty good. It tastes like yogurt. And it also tastes like, like herbs and flowers and, you know, if you ever had like violet toffee or something, it kind of tastes like that. And that yogurt is so like rich and creamy. It's not bad. It's a pretty, it's pretty, yeah, it's good. I'm gonna turn the air conditioning back on now. Okay, you wanna try? 